how long are you going to live? Have you thought about that? It's quite an awkward question, isn't it? When are you going to die? If you are planning your retirement, has your advisor asked you how long or what your longevity is? Or if you're planning your own retirement on your own, have you thought about how long you're going to last? It's not an easy question. In fact, it's a tough question in more ways than one. First, no one really knows. Tomorrow's promised to no one. And you're never going to really know the answer, will you? But the other reason why it's tough is because it's an awkward subject and not something people like to talk about. People don't like to discuss their mortality. But after today's show, I'm hoping you will, because I'm going to give you some insight as least to why I think you should be having this conversation or at least thinking about it. So today's topic is why knowing your life expectancy is really quite important. And I'm going to reference some study that just came out recently. And we're going to have this tough conversation. But when I say we, I'm going to bring in my co-host. Where is he? Tony Shore. Thank you, Tony. We're going to talk about something awkward today. I figured wow. let's bring you in the Welcome mix. to our new host, uh, everyone, Roger Waters of Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, the Nihilist. Wow. This is, uh, is kind of a downer, Dan. It's Downer not. Dan. I like okay. that. Downer Dan. I'm going to start off with a question for you, Tony. But let me give some context to this question because okay. this is important. Sure. Um, the name of the study is Financial Literacy, Longevity, Literacy, and Retirement Readiness. Now, TIAA, along with George Washington University, puts together they call the Personal Finance Index. Sure. They've done this for a few years now. And in 2022, which just came out in December, so the results are just coming out now in 2023, um, they added a question about longevity. So for the viewers on YouTube, I'm going to put a link right here. If you're listening... You go to TIAA.org and you can find this retirement readiness questionnaire. Now, they ask about retirement readiness and different retirement aspects. And we've done shows in the past about what the results are. But this one's unique because they threw in a question about longevity. And I'm going to ask you the question right now, Tony. And I want you to answer as if you just got this survey and you, you're you on it. You're doing your SAT exam. Think back to those days. Um, I don't even, did they even have SATs when you were a kid? Did they, what did they do? They did like farm, it was like farm questions. You know, no, many, they had, they had, the, AC, in kettle, they had the ACTs and the SATs. They had All the right. ACTs. So here's the question, Tony. What is the life expectancy among 60 year old men in the U S life expectancy among 60 year old men in the U S is it about six more years? So that's 76, 22 more years. So it's age 82, 28 more years, age 88, or one of the, the fourth option they give is, I don't know, which you're more than welcome to give as an option, but I will hold uh, it against you for the rest of your life. So this is for men. I would say because it's for men and it's at age 60, I, I've heard stats for, if you make it to 65, you'll live to this age. So I would say age 76 is the life expectancy you think the life expectancy among 60 year old men in the u.s is 16 more years age 66 no 76 yeah 76 sorry 76 yeah. that's my guess okay now okay so wrong now before we get into it i want to for the women that are watching i'm going to ask the same question tony pretend you're a woman wow Let's not. Um, so he, the question is, 60-year-old women, is it age 79, 19 more years, 25 years, 25 more years at age 85, 31 more years, age 91? So a 60-year-old woman, when, a, when is their life expectancy? 25 or 31. I'm not sure which. So age 85 or 91? Um, I'd say 91. That's my okay, guess. So 91. So you think the life expectancy, let's go back now, Tony, 76 for men? And 91 mm -hmm. for women. Yeah. And why do women die or why do men die so much earlier than women? Because they want to. <laughs> because they want to. Yes. Yes. And their and wives, in your case, yeah. maybe your wife agrees with that. They want you yeah, to. So, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so you got this wrong both times. And, uh, of course. And so, but you're not alone. The correct answer for men is age 82. So a 60 year old man is going to live about 22 more years to age 82. And okay. a 60-year-old woman 
is going to live about 25 more years to age 85. Huh. Okay. Oh, I thought it was more of the difference between women and men. So Three that's years. why that's why I said what I said. But yeah, I know. I went low but on men and high on women. So 37% gave the correct answer. So only 37% wow. of people asked this question, got it right. And we all know we Dan Wendell was one of them. <laughs> you know what? I should have, I did not ask myself the question before looking for the answer. Yeah. I should have, but I'd get it right now. Um, 40, <laughs> 43% of women Good. got it right, whereas 32% of men got it right. Yeah. So women got this question right more than men. Interesting. And here's another little interesting tidbit before we move on. 19% of women chose the underestimated age, whereas 31% of men chose the underestimated age. You chose the underestimated age. For men. For men. And whereas women chose, they got it right more. And if they got it wrong, they overestimated or they're about equal. Whereas men. Yeah. And these are averages because, you know, I know my, my grandfather blew this whole thing out of the water though. Exactly. So that's an important thing to note. And it was active up until uh, his, his, he was 101 and he was still active. 101. So when you, if I was to ask you, Tony, what you think your life expectancy is, that would be different than the question I just asked you. Yes, totally different. I, I would and, say then my answer, you know, my answer would be if I don't, you know, if I don't start dieting and exercising, I'm not, I'm going to be dead before I'm 30. <laughs> before you're 30. I love it. You know, um, I had to I, try to throw some humor in there. I think, um, and they made a point on this in the, in the study study. They said, we made it clear that this was the average 60 year old person and right. they asked all sorts of people. So someone, the younger people got it wrong. Whereas the boomers and the silent generation tend to get it right because they're closer and they know a little bit more about this topic. Sure. But they have a bunch of stuff on this and I'll put the link up here again. If you're interested, you can read it, but I want to highlight the conclusion and I'm going to read it because I don't need to embellish it at all. Here's what, they found. So what they did is they asked a bunch of other questions and compared it to how people answered on this one. And here's what they found. Retirees with strong longevity literacy were more likely to plan and save for retirement while still working compared to those that had low longevity literacy. And they tend to experience better financial outcomes in retirement. I believe so that. So said another way, when thinking about, while, while thinking about your own death can be considered a somber thought, Doing so provides you a financial advantage. If the more they, they concluded, the more longevity literacy you have, the better longevity literacy, the better financial literacy you have, the better financial literacy you have, the better your retirement outcomes will be. Sure. So it pays to know this. And they go into a whole bunch of reasons and details and numbers. And But I want to talk about my five reasons why I think it would be important to know what your longevity is. And you know these already, Tony. Yeah, I, I know you know these already. I bet you could think, why would you want to know what financial benefit would it be to know when you're going to, how long you're going to live? Be huge because then you can figure out how much you're going to need in retirement to last the rest of your life. It's the big question, how much will I need? And we talk about time horizons or you've talked a lot about how time horizons, like what's your time horizon? Well, if you knew your exact death date, you'd know your exact time horizon. And so you could play out your investments to maximize them. Makes retirement income planning exponentially easier. Doesn't exponentially, it? wouldn't it? But no one knows the day or time. So. Right. And my job would be so much easier. A lot of my job is coming up with a plan and then that's thrown out the window when things happen. I got cancer. Well, let's change the plan. Yeah, things um, happen. My parents are still alive or the market did terribly in 2022. Does that change your plan? Well, yeah, because I'm still going to live long. It didn't change my life expectancy. Um, things happen. But if you knew exactly how long you were going to go, you right. could say, yeah, I'm going to have this retirement income plan run 18 years and then kaput. Yep. Makes life easier. Yeah. Right. And, so and the sad thing is people don't want to talk about this or think about it, but it is so important to understand or try to get at least some idea of life expectancy, because like you're saying right now, it really impacts your financial planning and especially retirement planning and retirement income planning. And you think about if you're off 
I mean, you're not going to know if you're right because right? you're not going to be around to say, oh, right. I did it, right? But if you're off, and like most men are, they underestimate how long they're going to live. And so now I'm going to run my plan for 18 years. 18 years come by and you're still alive and kicking and you're doing quite well, but you only plan for 18 years and now you're out of money. Yeah. And that's a problem. On the flip side, you know, you say, I'm going to live for 30 years and you plan that out and you live like a pauper because that's what he has to do to live that long. And then, you know, then you get terminally ill year eight and you're like, well, why didn't I spend my money? Right. The, so it's, a, it's, but, but it's important to know that if, if you do have some idea, it makes retirement planning easier. What it also makes easier is maximizing social security. We've done countless shows on maximizing social security. One of the questions I ask, Good ones. I ask all my clients and I joke about it. Look, when are you going to die? And everyone, oh, like some people look at me like I'm crazy. Some people say, that's rude. I look at you like that all the time. Right, right. Even that's so show, I, I, that I mean. goes right off my back. But a lot of times people are concerned, like, why would you ask that? And then I yeah. say, well, it doesn't matter. Social Security knows exactly when you're going to die. And let's break out the statement. So I break out their statement, but you go online now. And it says, here's your death date. You know, here's how long this is your expected life expectancy is. Yeah. And people, whoa, wait, you know, oh, hold on a second. Now, when do you the take The government Social knows all. They do, right? And so um, when do you take Social Security? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Because if you're going to die at the average life expectancy, you take it now, take it later, it's all going to be the same in the end. When it matters is, well, my dad, my grandfather lived to 101 and on the farm. My dad's still alive. Uh, he's going to be in his 80s, right? Like, yep. I'm not going to die at 72 or whatever. Yeah. I, so let's not... Let's prove Social Security wrong and let's plan and maximize Social Security another way. But if you right. knew the exact death date, I could say, here's exactly when you should take Social Security to make the most financial sense. So there's another reason to really have that conversation, because if you don't make the decision, Social Security is going to tell you, you know, you're going to be stuck with whatever they tell you. <laughs> yeah. The lo this longevity conversation is an important one. You know? Yes. Another reason. Number three. It allows for better planning for your surviving spouse or dependents. So, okay. That's a big um, I'll give you an example for myself. My, I have life insurance on myself because something happens to me. My wife works, but she doesn't make enough to sustain the family, right? I want to pay off the house. I want to send my kids to college if I was to die early. Um, if I knew I wasn't going to die until I'm 87, then I probably wouldn't have life insurance to put my kids through college. Because they're not, they're going to be in their what fifties by then, right? So they don't need that. So I, but I have to get it because I don't know, right? Um, if I knew whether or not I was going to outlive my spouse, then maybe that would impact when I take my pension. Do I take the full benefit or do I take the surviving spouse? Do I include my surviving spouse? Well, not if that surviving spouse is going to be dead before I am. Then I would take the money, right? So there's financial decisions that if you knew would make life easier, at least financial life easier. Um, so if you know when your spouse is going to die, or if you're going to die early and you have dependents, you know to plan for them. Yeah. At the same time, another, the fourth reason, is to enhance or minimize your legacy. Right? You, you might say, well, if I knew when I was going to die, then I knew I would take Social Security at a certain time. I wouldn't touch my Roth IRA. I would convert because I know my tax rackets now. And I was thinking I'm going to have time. I wouldn't convert because I'm not going to be able to make up the tax revert, blah, blah, blah. There's a million things. You could say all in the name of leaving the most to little Johnny. If I knew I'm going to die at 72, I would buy a bunch of 10-year term insurance at 63 because that's the yeah. cheapest way to get, right? And beat the insurance company. Again, no one knows. Right. But at this, I often joke, and a lot of people say, I want my last check to bounce. If you knew when you were going to die, you could make your last checks bounce and not leave anything on the table. Yeah. Yeah, but most people want to leave something for their families. I mean, you don't want to leave your loved ones in a bad situation. So, uh, again, if you knew, uh, but, you know, and like you say, we don't, but the reason we're talking about this, then they say, well, then why talk about these things? Because you need to be thinking about them. You need to think about possible longevity and plan for it. And right. As a job, I have to plan for it. And people are underestimating. I have to say, well, yeah, maybe we plan for 30 years instead yeah. of 20. Like, here's some reasons why. 
and that impacts today because what yeah. you do today and we did our show on vegas i'll put it up there for those that didn't see we did a show when we were in las vegas tony and i yep. and we talked about how um you know how do you plan for for the future and do you what level of risk do you take and i said retirees need more risk well not if you're going to die in five years maybe you don't need more risk right but if i knew hey i'm going to live 30 years then you could put a little action on the blackjack table because you know you can ride the wave you can put some money in the stock market because you have 30 year time horizon again that's how you it's started. all about that time horizon yeah right. last week's show was a great one uh that we did live in vegas we recorded it there that was amazing um last but not least tony the fifth reason okay reduce the fear and stress associated with finances people fear running out of money more than death it's and true. here we are talking about both yeah. If you knew when you were going to die. Fun, fun, fun. You would never fear running out of money if you knew you went you know, longevity. Yeah. So, but here, and this is this is where I want to take a little twist. Um, does it add a new level of fear? So I carry a coin. I thought I did. I do. I carry a coin. I'll show everyone. I don't think I've ever told any of my clients or the listeners that I do this. I have... And I, you've seen this before. Yep. It says memento me mori, which yeah. is Latin, uh, means uh, remember thou art mortal. It's got a picture of a, uh, a skull on it. <laughs> Man, this is getting gross, right? Yeah. Um, there's also an hourglass on that, and the skull's got wings. So it's a reminder to me that tomorrow's promise to no one, that today could be my last day. And so I got to live it like that, and I have to uh, be virtuous and, and do the right thing because who knows, right? Right. But if we take that to the next level, one of my friends who's also very stoic, he asked me this question, and it was the, I still think it's the most difficult question I've asked, and I'm going to ask you, Tony, think about this. And you, listener, think about this. If there was a way, if, if, if we knew the exact date you were going to die, would and the doctor knew, and you know, did a little calculation, came up, and 99% accuracy, you're going to die on this date. Would you want the doctor to tell you that date? Would you want to know the day of your death in advance? It's a tough one, isn't it, Tony? Yeah. It's a question I would have to give some thought, but probably not. Initial, my initial reaction is yes. Right. After you know, looking especially, at five reasons. I just gave yeah, you five you just, reasons why. You just gave me... Uh, from financial stand, uh, planning standpoint, yes, and uh, and maybe there are things I could do. You know, you make me rethink it with like, hey, I could take out some term life insurance, and right. yeah. But again, yeah, that's but for the, the doctor next would probably that, that's tell for your survivors. It's not going to yeah. help you. Yeah, for my own self uh, and stress and things and just life. I'd rather continue to live life as normal, and in order to live life normally, I would need not to know that. And so that comes back to the whole point of this show, which is knowing about your longevity is very useful financially, but why don't people think about it? Why are people ignorant about it? Is it because they bury their head in the sand? Is it because they just don't know? Or is it because they don't want to know? And I think it's a combination of all, but I think that I don't want to know is quite powerful subliminally or subconsciously or just... Yeah. Outright people say, I don't want to know. Because well, if the world was going to come to an end tomorrow, the, the entire world would, you know, the earth is going to be blown up and, you know, uh, or everything's destroyed in a nuclear explosion or war or something. Some uh, the apocalypse is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, the world would be better off if we didn't know that ahead of time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But at the same time, you'd want to know that because you might behave differently, which is, again, why I carry the coin around to remind myself. That's you true. Know, it could be. So don't be a fool, you know, don't waste time. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'd rather th carry that coin and not know than carry right, that coin which and is kind know. Of what, right. And, and we never will know. You won't know. You I'd rather know. carry a coin than know the day the world's going to end. Yeah. <laughs> interesting, interesting conversation, right? I mean, there's, but, but I think knowing the range and getting closer to that, and really thinking about it from your own perspective. And it can easily start with, well, when did my grandparents die? Well, how? Yeah. How, do, how old do my parents live? Have you thought about that? You know, that's kind of scary too. Life expectancies have gone up, but I remember as a child 
when my grandparents hit 60, that was like, they are ancient. They are, but I was a kid. Now, when my, most of my clients are hitting 60, you know, late fifties and, you know, back in the day, I'll be there yeah. soon too. And so will you. Yeah. And my perspective has changed uh, of age. And, but I think it's important for people to take a step back and think about that and say, well, why do I want to think about it? It's a scary thought. I don't want to. It's because it'll help you financially. If you start thinking about these things, it helps you financially to think about whether or not you can retire, do the math. Even if it says you can't retire, it'll help you knowing that it takes a relief off because, you know, right now you're shooting in the dark and, you know, you could be right. You could be wrong. Happy go lucky. Better not to know, you know, ignorance is bliss, but I don't think so. I think when it comes to financial planning, ignorance is not bliss. I think it makes financial sense to think about it. Um, so take the time to think about your mortality because the science says you have a better financial outcome if you think about longevity, if you have better knowledge about your future. Right. And anecdotally, I find that people that know more tend to have less stress. But don't know and don't add, don't put it in the co don't put the coin in that little wizard. What's that the little game the with the oh the, yeah um, don't put the coin in there and the ask when you're gonna die because whatever don't want it is answer. yeah yeah you don't want Zoltan yeah. or something the yeah great, something yeah <laughs> exactly so you got it wrong Tony but do you see why you might want to get it right yes. You're going to look well, you past 26. Very, con <laughs> very convincing questions <laughs> uh, and points that you made. Uh, I mean, very convincing reasons why it's important to know. Yeah, that's huge. You want to know enough, but not all of it. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for a good show, Tony. Uh, hopefully you have a deep thought that you will bring home with you. Because I know <laughs> you're going to think about that question at some point, And you're going to say, why did I have that show with Dan? Why did he have to ask me that? Because now I'm thinking about it. Would yeah. I want to know? Uh, it's worth thinking about, everybody. Enjoy the week. We'll catch you next time, everybody. All matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not an investment advice. Dan Whittle, nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance, Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc. and Dolphin Insurance, Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.